First up, the Trump name has been big news in India in the past week. The focus has been on the president's son, Donald Jr., who's in the country to promote a number of property developments that bear his family's name. He's rejected accusations that the business has been profiting from his father's election. India is one of the Trump company's most lucrative markets, with the most real estate licenses of any country outside the United States. Questions have been raised about this blending of policy and business, as our correspondent Sreya Banerjee now reports. 150 kilometres from Mumbai lies the town of Pune. It's a technology hub, with skyscrapers dotting the city's skyline. These are the Trump Towers, the first buildings in India to use the Trump name, and they happen to be the tallest in the city. There are 46 luxury apartments spread over 23 floors, and each apartment costs a whopping 2 million euros. Each apartment uh, is about 6,094 square feet. We've got five bedrooms, living room, a separate dining area, as well as a separate deck area. Those who own property here include India's rich and famous, among them businessmen and Bollywood stars. They're attracted not just by the swanky apartments, but also by the Trump name that they associate with affluence. Sagar Chordia is the first real estate developer to have signed a partnership to license the Trump name in India. It's a recipe for success. Trump brand has really helped us. We got 20% more appreciation than neighboring buildings. After he became president, we got more visibility. But anyway, we sold the 80% of the project was already sold before he became president. Chordia isn't allowed to use President Trump's images anymore for advertising purposes. He says he now deals exclusively with Donald Trump Jr., the president's eldest son. But fears of conflict of interest have crept in. Experts worry that Trump's position as president could have an impact on his businesses. Political contacts can be used to get uh, permissions, sanctions, uh, licenses, permits to build where somebody else may not be allowed to build. India has the most number of Trump real estate licensing deals of any country outside the US. Other Trump towers are currently being built in Mumbai, Kolkata and New Delhi. So what is the strength of the Trump brand? Let's go to London and speak to Joe Twyman, head of political and social research at YouGov. Joe, we were hearing there from India about the relatively positive perception of the, the Trump name. How does that compare to elsewhere in the world? Uh, well, it is hugely variable in, in fact, the same way that it is hugely variable across the United States. There are areas of, uh, of countries and indeed entire countries where Donald Trump is seen as, uh, seen as a favourable uh, favorable person. But of course, there are large areas where he is not and he divides opinion to a much greater extent than his predecessor or indeed any previous US president has done. What we know from the global studies that have been done into this area is that on average, Approval for the U.S. leadership has fallen significantly since he came to uh, came to light. So while there is variation overall, it's the case that support for the United States and support for him as a leader has fallen dramatically. You've also been looking at how the Trump businesses are being perceived since his election. How has that changed? Uh, well, it's certainly true that, uh, that these things are not indistinguishable. People, uh, people do associate Trump the brand, Trump the name, Trump the hotel, for instance, with Trump the, uh, Trump the politician. And so in those countries where he, uh, where he is not viewed very highly, then, uh, then the brand is not viewed very highly. For instance, the conversations that he's had where he described countries like El Salvador, countries like, uh, like the whole of Africa, for instance, uh, although obviously that's a continent, uh, describing those areas as, quote, a shithole uh, were, did nothing but damage his reputation in those, uh, in those areas. And so there, both the brand and the businesses have taken a big hit from South Africa all the way up to, uh, all the way up to Northern Africa. How much does perception of brands really influence consumer behaviour? We know, as you're saying, in some of those countries, for example, Trump Hotels isn't as popular uh, as it might have been before. But their Ivanka Trump's business, for example, still appears to be doing quite well since the election. So is there a direct connection between perception and how consumers behave? Well, this is a very unusual situation because it's so closely tied with politics. But it, it's certainly the case that, uh, uh, that these things are one affects the other. Uh, Ivanka uh, Trump's brand, for instance, was uh, was rejected outright by Nordstrom, a major a major uh, shoe 
retailer in the United States just after the election. And we've seen various examples of this in the past. Uh, my favourite example is actually Godfather Pizza. Uh, this, was, uh, this was run by a, a guy called Herman Cain, who ran as a Republican back in, uh, back in a previous presidential election. And up until he announced his candidacy, Democrats and Republicans had pretty much the similar view of his brand, of his, him as a person, and crucially of his pizzas. And yet, after he announced his, uh, after he announced that he was running for president, we saw massive growth in support among Republicans, a massive fall in support among Democrats when it came to their attitudes towards the pizza. And so, you really can bring about significant change by attaching your brand to a political ideology, position, or candidate. Could it have gone either way? Is there a question that if, you know, that in fact the brand could have become much more popular depending on the candidate you're associated with? It can certainly go both ways. And indeed, to say that Trump's support has fallen overall is true. But that doesn't mean that some areas and some people haven't increased their support for him. In Britain, for instance, people who previously supported uh, the United Kingdom Independence Party and even those people who wished to leave the European Union their support for Trump has gone up since he was elected. Now, it started off from a very low base and it hasn't gone up by much, but it has increased. And that is very likely to be played out in, with his brand commercially as well. Over the long term, is there more of a chance that the, the business and the politics could separate in perceptions? Or uh, from what your experience of research is, do they tend to stay fairly closely aligned? I think the degree to which they are tied together depends on the specifics of the business and, uh, and the way it's branded. For instance, Herman Cain and Godfather Pizza didn't have that obvious link between them back in, uh, back in the 2010s. However, the link between Trump and Trump Tower, for instance, and Trump golf courses and Trump University is incredibly strong because he has always been such an important part of that branding. His, it's his name above the door in those hotels. It's his face that was previously, at least, on all these adverts. And so to separate himself from the brand is going to be incredibly difficult. And I would be very surprised if he's able to do that either while he's president or even after he's president. OK, Joe Twyman from YouGov, thank you very much for speaking to us from London. Thank you. Now here